Well, hello, Molecular Recombination fans. Okay, okay, it's not that bad. I'm going to go through these little slides and help you out. And please watch the videos that are posted as well to help you. Okay, so recombination is really just crossing over. And so we start with two strands, right? We have our little happy chromosomes, right? Homologous chromosomes. And an attempt at crossing over happens. We talked about having a double-stranded break in one of the strands, right there. See, breaks right there. And, right, each one of those becomes somewhat single-stranded. And one of these, in this case, this guy, invades in, and breaks hydrogen bonds in, using a bunch of proteins, into the other non-sister of this homologous pair. And what we see is this guy invading and kicking out this strand, which then invades down here. And so what we get is a blue guy here on the red chromosome and a red over here on the blue chromosome. Okay, so one strand of each invades the other guy. Now we're not showing this extra guy here for any of these, but right, he's still there and he's still there and yeah, he's there and he's there. He's just hanging out doing nothing, right? We're ignoring him right now. So that's why we don't see him. So don't freak out. Okay, it's all good. All right, so now we've invaded, right? There was strand invasion and second strand invasion. And both of these invading strands migrate down the chromosomes. And the distance they migrate is completely variable. So they call this branch migration. So branch migration happens and increases the size of this heteroduplex, right? The heteroduplex is the area where the red strand has invaded the blue, right? And the blue strand has invaded the red, okay? And then we look at where they're still connected, and again, that's the branch point. So here they're showing us in a just a stick method, and down here they're showing us with the actual helices. So whichever way is easier for you to understand, they're both representing the same exact thing, right? So here's our heteroduplex formation and branch migration using the sticks, and the same thing down here using the double, double helices. Okay, so we still haven't dealt with any crossing over. Nothing's happened. We've just had strand invasion and branch migration. It's the next step at this holiday intermediate, again, because Dr. Holiday saw this happening and described it and talked about the resolution and had to name it after himself because he thinks he's the best thing ever, right? Right. Okay, so again, two different kinds of pictures. I like looking at the double helix better. I think that's easier for us to understand and follow the strands to see what's going on. But again, either one is fine. So they're just showing you opening it up so you could see this stuff in here. Okay? It's not what really happens in the cell. They don't go all twisting around. They're just sitting there. But depending on which strands are broken and rejoined tells you whether there's a crossing over event or not. So on this picture, before we get even to the next one, I'm going to try to help you understand that. So I think these colors are pretty decent. And you can see, right, this is the blue guy, the other half of the blue guy, right? It was invaded here. There's our heteroduplex on this chromosome. And so originally, right, this was the blue chromosome, right? It's still the blue chromosome. And this, right, I think you can see the red pretty well. And then here's heteroduplex, the rest of the red guy, right, the little heteroduplex. So originally, this was the red chromosome. All it has is that it's strand invasion and heteroduplex, but it's connected physically right here to the other chromosome. So red and blue are connected together because of those strand invasions. So the question is now, if it really did cut right here, if these cut here and this guy got back together, there'd be no crossing over. The red would remain the red guy with heteroduplex, right? And the blue would remain blue. If, on the other hand, it cut this way, that would change. Now this end of the blue goes with this end that's red, and this blue goes with that end that's red.
So that's all they're saying. Okay, so if we look at this guy, and they've opened it up so that you can actually see how the strands would come back together. If physically we broke here, and we broke here, and we then connected, right, this blue strand here with this red strand here, right, then we're going to get the cut that go oops sorry the cut going this way right and we end up with these chromosomes right we end up with essentially this guy right a red end with a blue that's this one and this guy a red end over here with a blue. Okay, so here's the red end, here's the blue, here's this red end, here's this blue. Both contain this area of heteroduplex. Okay, that's all they're saying. So that's one possible way to resolve the holiday intermediate. If, on the other hand, this strand was cut and this strand was cut and those came back together, right, we would get this being a, a complete chromosome that's been religated, which is that guy, right? Red butt here, little red butt here, heteroduplex, or cut this way. Blue butt here, blue butt here, little heteroduplex, right? That's that guy. If both ends remain red, like this one, right? This is the red end, this is the red end, that's like the original. That is the same as original with heteroduplex. So there's not a crossing over event, right? These two ends did not switch places. Red is still red or big A. Blue is still blue or little a. Where in this case, if we're using this end down here, right? This was the original blue chromosome. Look, he's got red on him. This was the original red chromosome. Look, he's got blue on him. Yes, crossing over happened. Yay. <laughs> Woo, yay. Okay, so that's all they're talking about is this resolution. You have to do strand invasion, heteroduplex formation, branch migration, holiday intermediate, and resolution, either crossing over, resolve, depending on which strands are clipped and re-put and re back together, and or crossing over did not happen. They went back to the same way. So that's your crossing over event right there, okay? We still have this stupid heteroduplex region to and fix it, right? The only difference between... Two alleles on homologous chromosomes is a few base pair changes, right? It's still the gene for earlobe shape, but does it code for the earlobes that are floppy or attached? There has to be a change in the DNA sequence in order for a gene to have two different phenotypes. And so that's what they're saying. So they're showing us um, these heteroduplex regions, right? And this would be an example of a recombinant chromosome, one where crossing over did happen, right, because we can see one end is blue, one end is red, and there's heteroduplex in the middle. And this also has to happen even if it didn't cross over, right? This is their example. This end is red and this end is red. So that was the original chromosome shape, but look, it still has this heteroduplex in there. So we have to fix that. We have to make both strands be completely homologous, all the same complementary base pairs. We can't have a C and a T in any kind of hydrogen bonding. It won't work. So either the C needs to be switched to an A or the T needs to be switched to a G. And that's where fixing the heteroduplex involves DNA repair enzymes. And so here's a little picture showing us how this works, actually using sequences and alleles. So they're showing the red guys are the big A and the blue guys are the little A, right? And this is how they'd start out 
right? Homologous chromosomes just sitting there, right? All the big A's are G's and C's. All the little a's are a's and t's, so they're not the same. Same gene, different alleles, small changes in base pairing. Once single-stranded breaks occur and recombination happens, blah, 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 heteroduplex, mismatch bases, we do holiday intermediate, we do the resolution, and what we're left with, right, these guys are the originals that weren't involved at all, they're just hanging out doing nothing, but the middle guys here, right, looks like they had a crossing over event because we have some red on the blue and some blue on the red. And you can see the mismatches here, right, in the base pairing. We can't leave it like that. We have to either fix the G's to be A's, right, right there. Oops, I covered them up. Or these A's to be G's right? Or the C's to be T's and the T's to be C's. It has to be fixed so that there's homologous total complementary base pairing. No mistakes. Okay, so we have to fix that header duplex to be normal. So now what we see is a gene conversion event. Oops, right? We, are no, we no longer have the one-to-one -one ratio that we are supposed to. This one fixed it to be back to the one-to-one -one ratio. And we can still see there was a crossing over event on this end, right, and on this end. So the moral of the story is, first we have to deal with crossing over, and then we have to deal with the heteroduplex formation and a possible gene conversion. So there can be any combination of those. And so that, my friends, is molecular recombination. It wasn't so bad, now was it? Okay, uh, I'm sure I'll be seeing you again soon. Thanks so much for listening.